Welcome to Board Game Archaeology, where we play time-worn games from the past. I'm Hunter. I'm Rob. And today, we're playing Cinderella. Cinderella, a Catacos storybook classic. Copyright in 1987, although the front says copyright 1988, so I'm guessing 88 it probably came out. Um, fun game, another Catacol one. Um, a sister game to the um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs we did a couple episodes ago. Seen here on screen. The goal of the Cinderella game, similarly to Snow White, is to get to the end or get all of the storybook cards first. Yep, and the game comes much like the Snow White one. This is based on the story, not the Disney film. So it's a little more generic, yet it's got similarities to it that I think the Disney people would have probably been able to argue, but that's neither here nor there. But it comes with a nicely illustrated story of Cinderella on the board game. It comes with your classic um four dice it comes with the one two three storyboard pieces and this one's a spinner game and one of the odd things we noticed is almost all spinner games are like six this is an eight you need an eight-sided dice to make this one work if you didn't have the spinner but there's special things to the spinner too and it comes with a beautifully painted cover much like the previous game we did um great painting i like paintings yes this is a very painting heavy uh board game and that's one of the, like the, the the things that, you know, kind of captures your attention. It's hard to figure out where the start is right away. But it is a really, like, the, to get started, it says to pick the youngest person. Yep. But then it goes around, and it's really about inching forward using the spinner. Yep, and the spinner has all roses on it, or a pumpkin, or the glass slipper. And you can see along the board, it's all roses. But every so often, you'll have a pumpkin... Or, if you're really lucky, you'll get one of the glass slippers up near the top. Now, they have special reasons for it, and it's different than if you roll or if you land on it. Yeah, if you spin a pumpkin, you go back one, because typically you'll go forward as many roses as you roll. But the glass slipper is also four ahead, and as you see, there's two uh, spaces that have four roses. And so there's just kind of a block that will move you forward four. However, if you land on a glass slipper, you'll go up forward seven. Right. And if you land on the slipper or the pumpkin, you get to choose to pick the pumpkin up. Now, if somebody already has the pumpkin and you land on it, you have the opportunity of picking the rose or having another turn. And remember, there's two ways to win in this game. It's having all three of these pieces or making it to the finish line so you always have to take at least one of the cards to make sure you have a card but at least it gives you a little more dramatic fun to the story i mean it could just be simply you move forward until somebody wins and this game actually gives you a couple little things to think about that's going to advance your younger players into game theory i think and it's not a lot but i still was more excited about this than just Moving forward, this gave us another trick to it. There was another reason to kind of play it. Yeah, because another thing, the cards aren't just things that you'll want to hoard and stuff. Because mm -hmm. uh, you can technically turn them in, like trade them in, so that instead of spinning, you just go forward a five flat. Right. Uh, which could be useful in particular scenarios, but you'll have to weigh it against how much you want your opponent. If you're playing with two people... Probably want to be careful about how many times you do that. Yeah, it really depends upon where you are, too, because there's no glass slippers down here, but they are up here. And if you can use five to hit a glass slipper, that's going to advance you so you can win before somebody gets three, I would do it. But it's very rare that I would give up that five unless there was an actual point to it. But again, it gives you that one complicated thing that's a little bit more than just roll forward, move ahead, and who gets there first. And I, I do like that part of it a lot. Yeah, it honestly was given a lot of thought, given our series, uh, just when it comes to board games where you got to get to one side of it. Because the pacing isn't too bad. Like, uh, in general, I thought that at first that maybe the number, because since four is the most you can go at one oh. time, typically on the spinner. And we that feel that's kind slow. of a short thing for when you get on do the slipper it should be five yeah you'd think that the glass slipper would be like one above the other four roses but it's basically just another four roses and then there's the artwork 
the artwork is phenomenal in this game or at least like in the terms after shifty gear uh you know i really like having some illustrations right now um and it's it, it is very nice and it's very 70s it really is and it tells the whole story of cinderella the entire thing in story pictures that are just as good quality for the most part as disney and very understandable with just reading it and i'm a comic book guy i grew up that way so the illustrated uh, sequential storytelling is kind of cool and important and it looks like they got good painters to work on this game and good design and the instructions are all this is all the instructions and this is the story of cinderella and it's quite depressing it starts with the mom's death like right away in the second 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 sentence but i always like a game when the instructions are only this big and you know you can get playing the game right away and you don't have to start learning things like other games that we're working on right now I am very entertained with the concept, though, that somebody was introduced to Cinderella via this board game. That would be a wild way to learn about it. Yeah, there's more in the series, but I don't think we have any more. But now I'm in the lookout because I think there's <laughs> three more uh, Catechol classics that go with this series. And, you know, once you get one or two or three and you start getting that set, you just feel some need to <laughs> collect them all. Then I can sell them all together or whatever, give them all away. Yeah, if we ever get them, you guys will know about it. Yeah, because we'll have them on this show. Well, thanks for watching. Yeah, and if you want to know more about us, check us out at toyarchaeology.com. You can find us on Facebook, but more importantly, like and subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.